Hey there. So beautiful harvest day today. Uh, Mid-October, weather's lovely. Things are growing really well. Just harvesting some baby kale mix. Talk a little bit more about this today and some other stuff going on. So now that it's cooling off and uh, getting into fall here, I can start growing some of these baby greens, which I love. This is a mix that I grew at my farm last year, which I love. Uh, it's just, we can't, we don't grow brassicas in the summer here for, for insect pressure and stuff like that. But this mix is great and I really like baby kale in general and we usually just do the red Russian, but this is a mixture of three varieties. So we have the red Russian kale, we have the KX1, which is that purple that looks like, uh, looks like the red Russian kale. And then the round leaf is Amara, which is also known as Ethiopian kale. It's actually a mustard green, but it works really well in this mix. So we get two different colors and two different text and shapes and it's awesome. The flavor is really powerful and uh, also really delicate at the same time. You can cook with it and you can eat it raw, but this is another succession. This one's, I think, a week behind the one I just harvested and uh, just lovely. And so just really happy to get this out to our customers this week. So the mix, if you're curious, is a third each. And the only issue I found with this mix is it only really works in the cooler weather, not just because of insect pressure, but the reality is, is the Amara grows a lot faster. You can see the size difference here. And if you don't catch it really early, the Amara will get too big. And when you go to cut it, you get a lot of stem. And so that's not favorable for the mix and also for labor and stuff. And when you're harvesting baby greens, you can see here that this one is, you know, you got the branch in here, you got it splitting. And so when you cut it like this, it won't regrow. So that's another part of the problem. You wanna make sure you cut it so it's like a single, a single leaf like these or a single stem. And that's what you're looking for. So you wanna make sure that you cut it you know, high enough so that you don't get too much stem and also that it'll regrow. So that's what's going on here. But again, that mixes a third each and I just mix the seeds together and then seed it out. But again, it, it's really special when you catch it the right time. It's just here, it's so hot during the summertime. The Mara just grows so fast and it's so much bigger as you guys can see here, but we'll make it work. And we got a couple beds here in succession for uh, the next month or two. So I just put that baby kale in the fridge. We got some other stuff being washed right now. So I'm gonna go harvest some peppers. And this is really my favorite time of year. The shoulder seasons are the best because stuff just grows at a more reasonable pace and you know they don't have as much stress from the heat. And it's also just more pleasant to be outside and the light's really pretty out here today too. So yeah, I'm gonna go harvest these peppers. These are the Italian sweet peppers I did a video about. Uh, I'll put a link up here and down below if you wanna learn more about these. They've just been great and they sell really well and uh, I just love eating them. So <laughs> I'm gonna go harvest these guys. So these are just an awesome crop and one that I really fell in love with this year. This is the first time we've grown these and they're just so abundant. It's just unbelievable how much you get off of them. And you know, peppers take a while, but here in the summertime, Things grow so it's tough for a lot of crops to grow in the middle of the heat, but peppers love it. So these have been awesome. Another great thing is that, you know, unlike cucumbers or tomatoes where you gotta be harvesting like pretty much every day, like we come in here just on harvest day, which we harvest once a week. And you know, they're not, there's nothing that's like overly ripe. There's a few that we miss, but like generally we could just come in here once a week and harvest these and, uh, and be pretty good, which limits the, um, the timing on the harvesting and all that kind of stuff. So. You guys can see I'm just sitting here just pulling pulling peppers out of here. It's just awesome. And uh, they really look great on the farmer's market or the farm stand. And the customers love them and we all love eating them too. So it's just fantastic. Man, this is one full tote. It's probably our biggest harvest yet off of these plants. This is uh, about 100 feet of peppers and the yield has just been crazy. It gets better like every week I feel like. And I remember I posted the video about these peppers and I was like, you should just harvest the green ones. And I'm like, there's no need. I mean, these are all fully ripened peppers. And I'm curious how much this weighs, but you know, we sell them in pints for three bucks and it'd be great if you're doing that farmer's market, one for three, two for five model. If you guys are thinking about doing that or you do that, they're awesome. But I'm just curious about the weight here. And as the season's kind of wrapping up here, moving into fall and winter, um, and all the stuff going on with this channel and starting my new channel. I got some thoughts I want to share with you guys, but first let's go, uh, let's go weigh these and see how we did. What? 37 pounds. That's unbelievable. 
All right, so Michaela's packing in the peppers here. So this is how we sell them in pints. Usually, I don't know, five, six, pep four, four, five, six peppers. And uh, we got green beans going out day two. Just showing you some of the produce we're growing here on the farm. And then, Jesse, what do you got going over here? Green onions. Let me show those, show those sauce out here. Oh man, they look so good. Awesome. Wow, just an amazing day out here today. We're getting a great harvest. I've really been enjoying the fall so far. It came a little bit early for us this year, I think, but you know, not complaining. The vegetables have been growing so much better once the heat drops and we're getting great yields. And just the fact that it's now fall and things are growing more slowly, it just feels like things are slowing down a little bit in terms of production. This year has been absolutely crazy. As you guys know, just building this farm out from scratch, uh, my personal stuff, just all the things I got going on and COVID and man, it's just, I'm trying to take a breather right now and, and when I can and sort of reflect a little bit about what's going on. And uh, last night I had Jam Forte on Growers Live and it was really awesome. But if you guys don't know, I do a live show on the No-Till Growers channel every other Tuesday night and we have farmers and industry professionals and it's live and people can interact and ask questions and stuff. But some of the conversation that came out of that, which it was awesome, it was great to have him on and chat with him. Is just an amazing farmer, an amazing human, an educator. And what we sort of talked about was that it's really special to be able to share people's stories and showcase farmers in a really beautiful and professional way. And I think I take that very seriously as part of my job as a content creator on this channel. And you guys have seen some of those farm tours and interviews that I've done with other people uh, in the last couple months. And it's just super special. I feel really lucky to be able to do that and you know have the the audience here to, to support it and um, you know building up my skill set to try to you know show that in the best light as possible and you know JM is his new project is Growers & Co and they're doing uh, a really beautiful magazine that's gonna come out every six months and they have clothing line and tools and just so many cool things and I just I just feel that sharing people's stories and stuff is super special and sometimes I you know I'm, I'm caught up in the analytics of YouTube and all that stuff and I know it doesn't matter to you guys but Sometimes I forget that there's people watching this and there's all these, all this that's going on beside, on the other side of this camera, on the other side of the internet. And uh, just want to thank everyone for the support. And you know, as my life's getting crazier with more content creation with my new channel and going to be doing a little bit less content here, but I will promise I'll get at least one video out every week. And so there will be a shift there. But as I think about creating videos and helping other people create videos, um, I just think it's, it's really special. So I got something else special for you to share with you guys today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on next door. All right, so I'm next door right now in that shopping complex and there are a lot of really cool businesses here and we really try to promote each other and collaborate as much as we can. Standard here is a restaurant and bar that's been here for a long time and it closed for a while. And this year they put a brewery in and they've been trying to reopen but plans have been obviously changed with COVID and they're going to be opening very shortly and I'm really excited because we've been trying to talk and collaborate and eventually maybe Make, have them make a beer with some of our ingredients. And it's really exciting for me as a former brewer. I love talking about all that kind of stuff too. So I got two of the brewers here. Let's let them talk about what's coming up. Wit and Lance, uh, I, we've been hanging out next to each other for this whole year. And with COVID, you guys, you know, obviously things got delayed, but you guys are opening this week. It'll be a few days before this video comes out, but talk about what you guys got going on over here. Yeah, so we're opening with our uh, beverage program. Um, we're gonna have uh, seven beers on tap, uh, maybe eight, I think eight, yeah. five of our own beers and uh, two guest taps for ancillary fermentation. Um, we'll have cans of our house lager to go. Um, we'll have a biodynamic wine program, a kind of small uh, wine program, including draft wine. And we'll have a, uh, a cider called Standard Private Label from Botanist and Barrel that I uh, helped blend. And yeah, we're gonna open at noon on Friday, which will be four days after this is, or before this is aired. And um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the first day me and Lance and uh, Andy, yep. uh, another partner are going to be um, serving the whole time. Sorry, I talked down there. Um, we're gonna be serving the whole time and uh, we're gonna hang out this weekend and have a good time. Awesome, and yeah. so you guys are just doing outside for now? Um, so we got 50% inside. Okay. Um, so we have our, the whole place has been professionally cleaned up and we're gonna have, uh, I think we can fit 40 people inside. So with a uh, half capacity, so we're gonna have about 40 seats inside and then this whole walkway here and then the back as well, so. Cool, yeah. and uh, can't wait to show off when you guys fully open and everything and collaborate. I know we're talking about putting some of our veggies and herbs and stuff in your beers. Yeah, the, the hope actually is to have a beer on tap here that features something from Raleigh City Farm 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, we had a misconnection on the first brew for that beer. 
but we're probably going to rebrew the next couple weeks. We'll be hitting you up for veggies. So yeah, yeah. All right, such. Guys. Looking yeah. forward cool. to it, and uh, been awesome being neighbors and continuing moving forwards. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. So this is that cover crop that we just planted coming up nicely. That rye clover combo. Everything's working out great, and just so happy to see those guys getting that place open and really trying to support each other and collaborate as much as possible. And you know the sweet hat they just gave me. So trying to represent and you know help each other out as much as possible. And yeah, just uh, want to share a little bit of the harvest today with you guys. We also did harvest carrots, lettuce, green onion, probably a couple other things I can't think of. But yeah, just beautiful. And you know it's gonna be a nice evening for our farm stand. So that's all well and good. And I just it's also good to take a, mo a few moments to reflect about you know where you're at, where things are going, what's important, all those kinds of things. And I just feel that right now it's been really special for me to be able to share. Uh, not only my story and the journey on the farm here, but also you know teach as much farming stuff as I can. And then really important to me has been sharing other people's stories. My biggest takeaway from meeting all these other farmers is obviously their farms are really cool and all that, but the farmers are the coolest part. The people, their stories, their ingenuity, their intelligence, their determination. And I wanna be able to display that in a, as much of a beautiful way as possible and try to be as professional as I can and try to tell their stories and give them an outlet and you know, share that a lot of this is possible if you work hard. And so that's really what I'm trying to do and going to continue doing that. So that's what I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. We'll see you in the next one.